Hello, fellow learners, and welcome to EDU Series On Air, our podcast on topics in relation to the management of distance education. My name is Mickey, your host on air, and for the next two episodes, we will be talking about academic and institutional leadership, and more specifically on how these roles compare in conventional versus distance education institutions. Now, tonight's guest has spent over three decades in the academe, serving both as a college professor and administrator, and he will be sharing with us some of his experiences as an academic leader from a brick and mortar university campus and their shift to online learning. Now, this is a very interesting and timely topic for discussion, considering recent events brought about by the current global health crisis. We all know that in 2020, in line with the mandated quarantine protocols, educational institutions in the Philippines were prompted to temporarily shut down, affecting over 28 million Filipino learners across different academic levels. Of course, to ensure continuance of education despite the pandemic, educational institutions were compelled to implement modified forms of delivering instruction and pivot hurriedly toward remote online learning. Now, we've all seen and heard many stories of how this abrupt shift has affected our fellow students across the nation and even across the globe. But today, we will be looking at this through the lens of an academic leader. How did these changes affect them? And how has their role as academic leaders changed since? And to answer our questions, we have a very special guest today. He is a multi-awarded artist and a senior faculty at the University of the Philippines in Cebu. Since he started his career as an educator at the university in 1988, he has also held numerous administrative positions and multiple terms as the Humanities Division Chairperson, Arts and Humanities Cluster Chairperson, and Associate Dean for Administration back when UB Cebu was still just an autonomous college under UB Visayas. And upon its confirmation as a constituent unit of the UP system in 2016, our guest also served as the very first Dean of the UP Cebu CCAD, or College of Communication, Art and Design. Ladies and gentlemen, our esteemed guest for today, Professor Juanito Carl Roque Jr. Hello, Sir Carl. Welcome to EDU Series On Air, and thank you so much for gracing our podcast today. Hello, Mickey, and hello to all UPOU MED students tuning in. Thank you for having me on your podcast. I'm excited to be here, and I hope I'd be able to share some insights that could be useful for everybody. So I think I speak for our listeners when I say that we are all very excited to pick your brain and learn from you today. So I'll dive right into our first question. And I'm curious to know, as an educator who has spent close to 35 years in a conventional on-campus academic institution, how did you feel about this need to transition to remote and online learning in 2020? Personally, uh, I was shocked. I think everybody was, since there was not enough time to shift to a different mode of giving instructions. Everyone was caught unprepared, and there was a lot of pressure to deliver under such time constraint. Yes, I think that was a common response among students, teachers, and parents alike. So can you share with us how things played out in 2020, sir? Um, How did UB Cebu respond to the circumstances? Again, to be honest, we were frantic. UP Cebu has always been a face-to-face campus. If not, all the faculty and staff had no prior with distance education. Not having enough warning before shifting to virtual from what we were all used to, creating course module as diligently as we could, ensuring that the course objectives would still be attained at every end of the semester was very challenging. Familiarizing ourselves with the newly created virtual learning environment, uploading all pertinent information was also quite challenging, more so for those who weren't so 
tacky. Even though workshops were given to familiarize us with uh, the new online platform, it was still quite overwhelming to some considering the time limitation to address everything. I can only imagine how those first few weeks or months of planning and preparation must have seemed like such a whirlwind. I mean, aside from having to process and cope with everything that was going on around us, like the rising infection rate and the death toll, you had the added responsibility of ensuring educational continuity. So as an academic leader, as an educator, what were your biggest challenges? For the students, we all know that the availability of the needed tools to participate in an online course was one of the biggest challenges. Not all students had either a PC, a laptop, a tablet, or even a cellular phone. The economy was plummeting, companies were folding up, and people were losing their jobs. So while their families were experiencing financial difficulties, procuring the necessary equipment for school was not a priority. It was more of an additional burden. To further complicate the problem, some also had no or bad internet service where they were. Inasmuch as we would have loved to extend our assistance to everyone, the university, having very, li having very limited resources, could not be much help as far as these issues were concerned. After doing a survey to determine who among our students were faced with such predicament, the identified students were given a USB drive containing all their course material. At least in this case, internet connection to access those materials would be one less worry on their end. It was the best we could offer given the circumstances. The USB drives were personally delivered to them by our staff. Needless to say, it was a tedious and challenging task, with some of them traveling to far-flung areas in the province just to deliver the USB drives. But it had to be done, since not all of our enrollees could afford long-term internet connection. Personally, my biggest dilemma was being able to maintain a balance, ensuring that my students were able to maximize learning and uphold the university's standards while still remaining sensitive to their needs and struggles during such unique times. For instance, in my SFA 126 Materials 3 class, I had students who went home to their hometowns, some very remote areas with no access to even the most basic art materials. Of course, we want to be sensitive and as human as we can, uh, but also as an educator, we also did not want to compromise academic excellence. And definitely, I did not want to shortchange my students either. For me personally, as a student who, like everyone else, was trying to cope with the situation, I think that's something that's often overlooked, at least from a student standpoint, that our teachers and administrators were faced with a multitude of challenges as well. I mean, just as students had to navigate through these unchartered territories at that time, uh, the same can be said for educators. So what support systems did UP Cebu put in place in response to the changes in the faculties and students' needs? In consideration of the circumstances, the financial difficulty if some, if not most of the students' families were going through, the most support was needed was perhaps in the logistics and availability of materials needed for their respective courses. But this wasn't something we could afford to provide to everyone. So we had to modify some of the class requirements while still ensuring that the course objectives were attained and safeguarding that the university standards were not compromised. Other than modifying and adjusting the course requirements, a lot of compassion, patience, and understanding, needless to say, was the most humane thing to do considering the circumstances. With the limited resources and time to address the issues, most of which were not anticipated, 
and had to be dealt with as they surfaced, the university and the faculty tried its very best to find the solution on the fly. Constant communication in different platforms was very crucial for the students and faculty members alike, especially since physical presence and personal interaction was absent. We tried to make sure that the students did not feel orphaned. Personally, my students would communicate with me through my personal phone, email, Facebook, and of course through the VLE. Most, if not all, of the faculty went above and beyond just being an instructor or a mentor. In some cases, playing the role of a guidance counselor, a parental figure, an elder sibling, a friend, an emphatic listener. What about for faculty members and staff? For the faculty, workshops were held to aid us in preparing our course modules and modifying them to fit the online learning setup. Training sessions were also provided to train the faculty on how to use and navigate the newly developed virtual learning environment or VLE. Technical support was also made available to students and faculty alike should they have any concerns with the VLE. Now, sir, if you had the opportunity for a do-over, what as an academic leader would you have done differently? Or what additional programs or support systems would you prioritize and ensure were put in place? Knowing what we already know now, and assuming we had the time and the necessary resources needed, we could have anticipated certain things, such as having the necessary facilities to adapt to the different modes of teaching. For example, we could have acquired higher bandwidth to improve the internet connection. We could have provided every faculty member with a service laptop or a gadget that they do not have to apply for a loan to acquire this. In terms of resource generation, we could have partnered with NGOs or LGUs for donations to be used to procure the same for students who had no capacity to purchase this on their own. In hindsight, these are some things we could have prepared for if only we could have foretold what the future brings. We could have used a lot of support in terms of procurement and provisions of the necessary logistics. But it was totally unexpected. We did what we could with whatever we had at hand. Partnering with UPOU could also have been very helpful. With UP Open University as our country's pioneer in the study and practice of distance education, organizational and administrative guidance, or even just borrowing some of the system's best practice would have perhaps made the sudden transition less daunting. Also, while the university already had student support system in place, such as the Office of Student Affairs that provides guidance services and even scholarship and financial assistance, I think the unprecedented times called for a more robust effort to address the issues brought about by long isolation, which for most is unnatural and has caused mental issues not only to students, but to faculty and staff as well. Yes, there were webinars conducted to help address this, but I must say there is still room for improvement to approach it at a more grassroots level and really make mental health and counseling service more readily available and accessible to UP to the university's students, faculty, and staff. Upon resumption of the face-to-face -face classes, this initiative should also be continued to aid in further adjustment we will have to make as the world slowly reopens. Now, looking at your long history in UP Cebu, Sir Carl, and comparing it to the last two or three years, do you feel that this shift to distance learning has changed your role as an academic leader and educator? And if yes, how so? In a way, yes. When you have been with the academe for as long as I have, it might be easy to start getting set in your ways. 
Although as an artist, it has always been intrinsic to evolve and innovate. But as an educator, I feel that the shift to online learning, though temporary, has opened me up to an alternative manner of teaching to supplement the traditional face-to-face classes. That technology, if it is acceptable to all, afford us a vast array of teaching and learning tools and resources to use to our advantage. That educators, no matter how long you've been one, no matter how old school you think you are, should not be afraid to explore and maximize these affordances. However, in courses like ours, the visual arts program, I still believe that it can be best taught in a face-to-face and personal manner. The human interaction, the discourse, the collaborative activities, and hands-on experience are not so successfully achieved in a virtual setup. Somebody once told me that it was like teaching somebody how to ride a bicycle, but without a bicycle. As an academic leader in UP, academic and operational excellence has always been our primary mandate. It has always been our role to drive outstanding performance and high productivity. While this has not changed, the circumstances have pushed us to pay more mind, this time to the puso in utak at puso. While upholding the university's call for honor and excellence, we must not forget the call to service and realize that the welfare of our stakeholders, both physical and mental, must always be considered. We must exhaust all possible means to assist them not only in attaining their academic goals, but also to achieve this as a healthy, well-rounded, and productive individuals. At the end of the day, we must remember that as UP educators and leaders, we are preparing our students not only for a bright and fruitful careers, but for responsible and responsive citizenship as well. That being said, what do you think are the necessary qualities and characteristics in a distance education leader? For me, a distance education leader must be somebody with foresight, the ability to anticipate and adapt to the changing times, somebody who is proactive rather than reactive, somebody who is conscientious, especially in responding to the needs of the students, most of all, a compassionate and emphatic person. Last question for you, sir. What has the past two years taught you as an educator that you hadn't learned before? To see the bigger picture, so to say, that our perception and understanding is not always the way things actually are. We hear the saying a lot, especially during the pandemic, that we are all in the same boat. But that's not necessarily true. Sure, we all had to face the same rough and turbulent seas the past two years, but while you row your boat, others are frantically trying to stay afloat on mere rafts, if any at all. I have learned that there is no other way than to constantly adapt to change, to be flexible and eclectic, to take what we have learned to best practices, but be open to innovation and reinvention. Retain what is good and do away with what is not. That the knowledge and skills we learn from this institution, while invaluable, is not what will ultimately define you as a person. You will be defined by your character. And the experiences and time spent in this university should help you build that. Absolutely. And I think that's something we can all learn from the past two years. Well, those are all the questions that we have for you today, sir. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to join EDU series on air. I know you're on vacation right now, so we truly appreciate your time and all the insights you've shared with us. Um, Any final words for our listeners today, sir, Carl? Thank you, Miki, for this opportunity. Thank you also to all the listeners. 
As it is said in a paragraph of our university hymn, Malayong lupain amin mang marating, di rin magbabago ang damdamin. Padayon mga eskolar para sa bayan, maraming salamat. Yes, maraming salamat. Daghang salamat, Sir Carl, and padayon to you as well, and to all our UP faculty, admin, and staff around the Philippines. We know it hasn't been a walk in the park these past two years, and we definitely appreciate all that you do for your students and for the university. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today's podcast. I hope you've learned as much as I have. And once again, we'd like to thank our guest for today's episode, Professor Juanito Carl Roque Jr. from UP Cebu's College of Communication, Art and Design. And of course, we'd like to thank all of you for tuning in today. Again, my name is Mickey, your host for ADU Series On Air. Catch you again next time. Stay safe. Oh,